Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number 32. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, BI 348 chapter 2.5, import 3. And this is the start file. There's also a finish file. And be sure to download, and here's a picture of the link, be sure to download the zip folder with all of our files we need to import. Now we want to go look at what we're going to do in this video. We are going to take three Excel workbooks from this Import 3 folder here. And in each workbook, if I open this, look at this. Each sheet is the sales rep sale. So Joe, Mo, Phil, Gigi. So in this particular workbook, there are four sales reps, one on each sheet. If I look at the Kitsap store, there's Timmy, Chin, and Tyrone. So each workbook has sales, but numerous sheets in each. Not only that, but each one of those sheet names, we're going to need that name to be repeated many times so we know that those sales are associated with that particular sales rep. Now, our last video, we imported in an Excel workbook, and there was one sheet in each workbook. Here, there are multiple sheets. Guess what? We can go over to Excel. Power Query is the way to do this. I'm going to go up to Get External Data, From File, From Folder. Hey, this is about the fifth time we've already done this. And each time we see this has an amazing new use. We still have to browse to our folder. There it is. I'm telling Power Query to look in this folder and import all the files it finds in there. When I click OK, click OK. It retrieves information about the actual files from that folder. We want to be sure and give this a smart name. Import Excel workbooks and worksheet and enter. Now our extension column, this folder will always have .xlsx, so we don't need to worry about that. I actually want to keep this column. This is actually the name of the workbook. But if I keep this and then expand this and go through my steps to import it, I will know for all of the records in that file that they're associated with the Granville store, Kitsap store, et cetera. So I want to highlight both columns. I'm holding Control and clicking both column headers. Right click, remove other columns. Now, just like the last video, this column right here, we cannot just expand it because it's not a text file. It is an Excel file that has potentially lots of sheets and defined names and tables. So we have to add an extra column. Add column. I'm going to call this new column Get Excel Data. And we get to use a Power Query function, just like last video, Excel.Workbook is our Power Query function. I'm going to select from the columns, Content, close parentheses. And when I click OK, it'll add an extra column. Now, I actually don't want the .xlsx, and I don't want store. Actually, there's two ways. I could actually find and replace over on Transform. I could replace values. I could also split and use store.xlsx as a delimiter. I'm going to try replace values. We did split the last few times. I'm going to type store.xlsx. Each one of those has it. I'm going to replace it with nothing and click OK. And check that out. Now, I'm not going to need content anymore because I have the data from my Excel workbooks and Excel sheets in this column. So right click Remove. Now I need to expand this with my double arrow pointing to the side. And this is going to give me the option of expanding to see columns like the actual data, the item, which will be our sheet name, the kind, which will be like sheet, define name, or table. So I click OK. Now here's the kind, and you can see there's sheets, and there's a table. There was in, in one of those workbooks, there's a table that we don't want. There was also a defined name over there. And what we see in this column here, different than our last video's example, is that we have different items. Last time we had just sheet, so I want to filter this, and I only want the sheets. I do not want the defined name or tables. Click OK. Now I come over to Item, and these are all the sheet names that it finds. And I don't want anything that says Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Sheet 3. All of our sales rep data has proper names. So I come up here to Filter. And just like last video, we do text filters, 
does not contain, and I'm going to type the word sheet. What a does not contain sheet filter means is that it will only import sheets that have a proper name. If it has the word sheet in it, it will not be imported. I click OK. And now we have all of our sales reps. Now check this out. We'll actually get to have the from the file name, the actual store name, and from the sheet tab name, the actual sales rep name. We're going to need one, and I'm using the Control key 2 and the Control key 3. I want to keep all of those. Right click, remove other columns. Now I can click my Expand button. OK. We see that the first sheet has field names that are here. So for the first sheet, I'm going to point up to the upper left corner and say Use First Row as Headers. Just because I promoted the first sheet field names up to the top, there's plenty of sheets down below where there's an actual record that says Sales Rep Name, Date, Product, Sales, and City Name. And I do not want those records lower down. So I have to pick one of these columns. I'm going to try and pick the one with the fewest number of unique records. I'm going to pick product. And now, because there's a bunch of records, it says the list. This is a unique list, or it's supposed to be. List may be incomplete, so we have to click Load More. And it will go through and find the unique list. Now, when I filter out product, for this column here, boom, it'll find all of the field names below that have product. And it will remove the whole record, which means all of the field names down below we don't want. When I click OK, instantly that works. Now we need to name this column. I'm going to double click and call this Sales Rep and Enter. Double click and call this Store and Enter. Now think about this. What would we have done? Remember, this comes from the file name and this comes from the sheet name. That would have been a lot of manual typing and adding columns. But Power Query makes it easy to import and get one proper data set. Now I want to make sure that each data type is correct. So I'm looking Home Ribbon Data Type. I'm going to say Text, Date. I'm going to change Data Type to Date. Product, Data Type to Text. Sales, Data Type. These are whole number sales. Data Type for Store, Text. That's fine. Now we can close, and I'm going to close and load too. And I definitely want this as a table on the existing sheet. I can see that doesn't have a good sheet name. A1 is fine, and click Load. And check that out, 3,533. That is every single one of the records. Double click, Sales Data, and Enter. If I Control Down Arrow, that is just amazing, the sales at the Othello store for Gigi are right there. Control Home. So in this video, we saw how to use Power Query to do something just simply amazing. Import multiple Excel workbooks with multiple sheets, build a proper data set with the sales rep name from the sheet tabs, and the store name from the file name. All right, next video, we're going to see an even more amazing example. We're going to have multiple Excel workbooks, but the data is going to be totally messed up in every single one of the workbooks. And Power Query will come to our rescue, not only import every single file, but also fix all of the data and place it into a proper data set. All right, we'll see you next video.